but I, I, I cannot commit myself. You know. There's also one for me, mm -hmm. one for the community, you no, know, Lipa, and one for the world. And I'll tell you this much, you no, know, although you will not find it there. One for China, uh, not Russia. There is another one, she says, which concerns Mother Cecilia. Both Teresing's and Mother Cecilia's accounts continue to specify, however, that Mary grieved over the unbelief of the two nuns. Mother Jacinta, now prioress of Carmel, then a postulant, admits to her own severe doubt at that time. It is not only in this particular apparition that I'm not enthusiastic. In general, I'm not enthusiastic about apparitions. I only believe in apparitions that are approved by the church. So in exteriorly, I would accept that it's nice, but interiorly, I do not like it. I do not really like to be the visionary, but maybe there is a bit of competition or who is this interesting, who will be so privileged, something like that. She held on to her disbelief for 40 years, but has since come to a change of heart. As the apparitions at the Vine progressed, however, the lady's lamentation began to focus on one unbelieving nun, whom she did not name, but whom she asked much prayer for. Uh, her soul and salvation is, means so much to her. That's why she said, help, no? And tell the sisters to pray, pray. But upon man, we didn't know who would assist. I did not ask the man who, no? Because I, I don't like no, to ask. It is, of course, impossible to say for certain who the virgin was referring to. But some of the nuns recall one particular novice held in high regard by the community at the time who was unusually vocal about her opposition to the apparitions. During uh, those days, I could hear her ridiculing me, ridiculing Mother Cecilia. Suddenly she came and then she shook my head. Yeah, she shook my head like that. And then she told me, Ikaw. To my daughter who does not believe me, I do not oblige you to believe. It is enough that you do not believe. But do not block nor debase my sacred place, nor despise my words. Many times she's not joining our community. The next morning, because of the message that the apparition should be blessed by Monsignor the Bagdibisa. I, did, I didn't see her, but I think she did not join. And this novice told me, uh, I remember that very well, she said, why do you go here? It's better to go to the Blessed Sacrament. I do not oblige you to listen nor to obey them if you do not wish to, for you have free will. Neither should you honor me on Saturdays if you are not inclined to. Perchance, this will be my last message for you. Coincidentally, the novice was among the many who were to subsequently leave Carmel within the year. Sister Clotilde fully believes that this novice had intentions of discrediting the apparitions. She cannot, however, remember the novice's exact words. She will, she will do something against contradiction to the apparition. She must believe me if she wants to possess peace of spirit and also for the sake of my son. Sister Clotilde remembers when the sister in question left the convent. Well, that time she became very thin, very thin. And you know, her eyes are very sharp. Like those men who are dying, now the eyes is very sharp. Will be a friend. Nakita ko siya nung paalis na, nasa big room. Pero hindi kami nag-uusap. Nakita ko lang siya. Kita ko ang stress yun ang mukha niya. Parang yung bang nakakatakot na... Kita mo talaga siya, pero parang nakakatakot dahil ang tao pagkakontra sa isang bagay. Nakita mo sa expression ng mukha niya. Sister Clotilde recalls that this novice was in charge of the garden and that when she left, the prioress reportedly received a message from the Virgin saying that she would continue to bless that girl. And pray for her, that is the message. 
Then, can you say that? Pull all the roses in the garden and burn it. But aside from this novice, did you know of anybody else who was uh, uh, unresponsive to no. this? So, you mean like me? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So basically, it was just you and Sister Yes. It is not known whether the novice in question did have a hand in discrediting the apparitions, but the lady's message, do not block or debase my sacred place, nor despise my words, seemed to prophesy the harrowing events in the months and the years to come. Despite the strong warnings, however, Teresing maintains that as far as she is able to remember, it is God's great love for souls that pervades the entire corpus of the Virgin's messages. To stress this theme, Mary revealed that any soul who doubted her son's love gave him great pain and therefore also wounded her own heart deeply. She went on to describe her meeting with Jesus at Calvary and said, meditate on this and see how much the mother and son worked and suffered together to save the world. Is this then why Mary has manifested herself over and over again for the last 150 years, if only to tell her children that there is a God in heaven and that he does love? This theme has unfailingly pervaded each and every visionary's testimony throughout the history of Marian apparitions. Could there be truth then to Teresing's story? How could a sheltered girl, who hardly ever read anything except notes on a music sheet, be capable of such profundity? Would it be impossible to believe that grace had fallen superabundantly upon the little monastery of Lipa? In the course of the apparitions, the lady reportedly allowed the prioress to reveal to the entire community some of the events that had been happening to Tara Singh, events of which they had no prior knowledge. From then on, the community was kept informed. We seldom talk to each other. But then when we have recreation, that's the time when some news are told to us. So those who believe, are, you can see in their faces, they're all very happy, we clap the hands, and we really see our happiness. Well, there are others who are silent. We don't know what is in their heart. On September 26, the lady appeared for the last of the promised 15 days. She counseled the community to love one another, encouraging simplicity, humility, and obedience, and stated that her son was the way, the truth, and the life. She asked that a mass be held on the 12th of every month. She reminded the community to consecrate themselves to her, before vanishing, she finally identified herself, saying, I am Mary, Mediatrix of all grace. Not all graces? No. Mary, Mediatrix of all grace. And then she blessed and left and, and disappeared. After the 15 apparitions at the vine, petal showers began to recur with increasing frequency inside the cloisters. On September 30, the nuns found their cells scattered with petals. On October 3, hundreds of petals covered the entire staircase where Teresing and the prioress had struggled with the devil. We were all in the chapel. I forgot my meditation book, so I asked permission. Can I go up to get my meditation book? When I went up, I saw the whole stairs carpeted with petals. You know the stairs going up, the one there with the out sisters, no? That going full, no full. So I shouted, shower, shower. And when it's like that, we all run. The atmosphere of the convent was euphoric. To cries of shower, shower, the nuns would come running to gather the petals excitedly like children scrambling for scattered coins. I remember there was a shower there, and there was also a shower. Those are end of this, of this uh, cloister. At this time, the angels were also said to have visited Teresing in her cell. Sister Clotilde recounts Mother Cecilia telling them this. Then yes. she said, one time, Teresita is praying with the angel Jack and Poy, 
Jack and Paul with the angel. Oh, uh, Mother playing she said this. Told, she told us. And then, some one time, the angel, I think, was stayed on her lap. Uh -huh. And then she gathered the, like, the, the clouds. She's not the angel when she showed the picture that there is a little cloud, you know. Mm -hmm. Then she gathered it, like cotton. Mm -hmm. But it is uh, disappearing little by little. And that she wrapped it in a piece of paper. Uh -huh. yeah. But she showed that to Jack, and then she closed afterwards. She showed you the paper? Yeah. The, the piece of clouds yeah. that she gathered on the lap of the You saw it? Yes. It is like a cotton. Uh -oh. uh, then, it, and then one time, Teresita was not able to hear mass. She's on bed. Then when Mother Cecilia went up, she told us, the angel brought her communion because when she arrived there, Tershita showed, opened her mouth and she showed the post inside her mouth. The idea of receiving communion from an angel may have seemed blasphemous at the time, for little was known of the fact that Lucia of Fatima had also received communion in a similar manner, as had Melanie of La Salette, or so she claimed. And much later at Garabandal, there would be actual footage of what looked like a host materializing on a visionary's tongue, which she claimed was administered by an angel. Since then, so many other apparitions have been reported, and only a handful so far have been approved by the local bishops. And of the others, it is only in the last few years that documentation on these have been available. But there is an indication of this same manifestation in at least the events reported on Peña Blanca, Chile. Other incredible events were said to have taken place. There are accounts of a bluebird sighted within the convent premises during the apparitions at the vine. It's a ganito kalaking bird. As big as the, as the kalpati. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like doves, but blue. Usually, it uh, stops on top of a tree. Sometimes on top of the uh, of the, the house, of the roof. Sometimes just on the perching on a plant. And you'd hear his the sound. It's really singing, no? I don't know if that's is singing or what. Basta we heard the voice. Basta magbati namin. Dudu ng wako dia. We are not allowed to. To peep, but we peep because the bird is there. So I, I would drive always around and look for the bird. The bluebird somehow figured prominently in the events, for in those days almost everyone was aware that it was somehow connected to the apparitions. A mass was held at the apparition site on October 7 as the Virgin had asked, and the entire community consecrated itself to Mary following the devotion of St. Louis Grignon de Montfort. During the time of the apparitions, the nuns found in their cells little messages signed BVM in a handwriting unlike Tara Singh's or Mother Cecilia's. There were also accounts of a spinning sun, of a strange light on top of the vine, of plants in the garden turning to face the apparition site, or a cloud-like figure seen descending from the skies, and the heady fragrance of roses or azucenas that would often fill the cloisters at unexpected times. Terracing had several other mystical experiences, impossible at this point to render in all its incredible detail, but these may one day be published. The prioress documents, for instance, that the girl had visions of the Sacred Heart, of a multitude of angels and saints, of Saint Cecilia and Saint Therese of Lisieux in particular, and of a lady with whom she took long walks in a lovely garden full of birds and flowers. The postulant was also seen to lose consciousness, and then to silently reenact while lying on the floor the agony of Christ on the cross a phenomenon witnessed by the prioress, Bishop of Yar, and the rest of the community. So, naka stretch arms, yeah, but her hands are closed like that, and very stiff. You cannot move. Even if you try to move, you cannot move. As if she is unconscious like that, and her feet is uh, 
together, like the crucifix. No? Her hands mm -hmm. stretched, no? And I, we tried really to bend nothing. We could not. But very stiff, really, no? Her face is very sad. And I feel she's, still, she's really enacting the agony. The seven last words would be reenacted. And we did, really did ano, see it. I really did see it. Talagang kitang kita mo kung ano yung first word hanggang sa seventh word, eh, yung iyon ang nakikita mo sa kanyang mukha. Lalo na noong yung I thirst. Talagang alawit ng dila niya, laki. And then, my God, my God, why have you first? And she was looking like that. At saka yung sa last niyang into the hands sa ikumend my spirit, maganon eh. Talagang akala namin namatay, sumigaw na kami na kung akala namin namatay talaga, oo. It is interesting to note that this same phenomenon finds parallel in at least one other current day apparition, that of Naju, Korea, where the visionary Julia was also observed to undergo the passion of Christ in the presence of many priests and religious. In Naju, however, the phenomenon progressed to another stage, Stigmata and marks of other torture were seen to appear on the visionary's body. Mary appeared one last time at the vine. On November 12th, she came with this message. Pray, my child. The people do not heed my words. Tell my daughters that there will be persecutions, unrest, and bloodshed in your country. The enemy of the church will try to destroy the faith which Jesus had established and died for. The church will suffer much. Pray for the conversion of sinners throughout the world. Pray for those who rejected me and those who do not believe my messages in the different parts of the world. I am really sad but consoled by those who believe and trust me. Spread the meaning of the rosary because this will be the instrument for peace throughout the world. Tell the people that the rosary must be said with devotion. Propagate the devotion to my immaculate heart. Do penance for priests and nuns. But be not afraid, for the love of my son will soften the hardest of hearts, and my motherly love will be their strength to crush the enemies of God. What I ask here is the same I asked at Fatima. I bless this community in a very special blessing. All these can be revealed now. I repeat to you that I am Mary, Mediatrix of all grace. This is my last apparition here. And with this, she rose up to the clouds and disappeared. Her words were prophetic, for great persecution was to follow, and many lives and reputations would be ruined. The lady's visit at the vine had come to a close. But one final phase of the apparition was yet to unfold, one incredible phase that was to fascinate an entire nation and bring to public attention the young visionary Lipa and the messages of the beautiful lady on the vine. Before the Virgin's final apparition, petals had begun to fall outside the convent building. Mary had indicated in her last message that people would come, and so they did. In the succeeding days, more such showers were reported, and as word spread, people began to flock in increasing numbers to the convent grounds. But Monsignor Alfredo Versosa, Bishop of Lipa, was not pleased with these developments and had ordered the Carmelite sisters to withdraw the statue from public veneration. Aside from the eyewitness testimonies, we have the accounts of Monsignors Racelis and Salvatus, who had both heard of this from Bishop Oviar on one of the rare occasions when he commented on Lipa. Bishop Godofredo Pedernal, on the other hand, related what he had heard from another witness, a certain Romy Malabanan, who has unfortunately passed away. When uh, Bishop uh, Bersosa heard about this, there are many people coming to it, he would like to stop it. Because Bersosa is a man who would not believe so easily. Sabi ng madre, Monsignor, 
How about coming to the monastery and visit us? Sabi ng ibig ko, to visit you. No, I will go there not to visit you, but see to it that my order is going to be fulfilled. On the afternoon of November 19, he hastened to Lipa in anger, determined to chastise his auxiliary bishop and to put an end to the entire affair. When he reached the place, the monastery, when he opened the door, a shower of roses at his very uh, steps uh, came. A shower of petals fell on him and he knelt down and he could not utter any word. His feet were surrounded by petals. Nagulat yung bisko. Yung may dinampun na ganyan. Petal of flower. Madami. Almost like one plate. Uh, almost one plate. <laughs> And the bishop started looking around, trying to find where the petals came from. That was the only time I witnessed the shower. According to Romy, the old man knelt down and then he prayed. And then when the sisters came out to talk to him, he was, he was astounded. When the bishop left, he told his, the, the, the prioress, you can return the statue to the window. And by that, he did not prohibit any more the people from going to the place, and he did not prohibit the celebration of Mass. We sent some of the petals to Rome. They had me written the letter to the Pope as a private gift, telling the Pope of the events here, personal, not official. But that was not the bishop's only experience with the petals. Armando Mendoza Jr., the barangay captain of Granja, remembers one incident when, as a sacristan, he had helped the bishop dress after mass. Umalik ako sa kamay, tapos inalis ko yung kanyang sapatos. Sabi ko, bishop, kayo, kayo pala yung nagtatago ng mga roses sa inyong sapatos. Bakit ilang petals ito? Sabi ba, hindi ko, wala yan. Wala kaninang mga ganong alisin ko yan. Nung isuot ko, wala yan. Eh, kakos siya. Pumunta ko sa loob ng yun sapatos. Akin na ho. Siguro pag hindi tatlo, apat. Kinuha niya ang dalawa, binigay sa akin ang dalawa. Parang manghang-mangha siya. Much later, on December 6, 1948, an official account of the apparitions at the vine would be published with Versosa's imprimatur. With the bishop's sudden turnabout, crowds increased. The press got wind of the incredible events, and from November 1948 until after the verdict was released in 1951, the national dailies carried news of the famed petal showers of Lipa. International publications were also later to carry stories of the astounding showers at Carmel. Public response was tremendous. Lipa became a virtual mecca of devotees and was hailed as the next Lourdes. Thousands upon thousands from all over the country poured into the city and into the yard of the Carmelite convent. And characteristically, Filipino film producers simply could not resist turning it into a movie, featuring two of the country's most popular stars. In November 1948, the newspapers published accounts of the visit of Mrs. Aurora Quezon, wife of the late President Manuel Quezon. Dimating daw siya puno ng tao, hindi siya makapasok. Ngayon, kagisa-gisa, nagkaroon ng komosyon. Ano yan, ikanya? Ay marami hong petal na laglag. Yung kasama niya, nabayaw. Nalaglag sa harapan niya isang petal. He happened to be a mason. That converted him, the petal. In June 1949, then President of the Philippine Republic, Elpidio Quirino, attended Mass and joined the vast crowds milling around the convent in hopes of witnessing a petal shower. Masses were held daily at the convent grounds, rosaries said, constantly. Hundreds lined up in the hot sun waiting for their turn to pray before the image of Mary, mediatrix of all grace. The statue, which had been commissioned and finished in October, was encased in glass and exposed to the public with Versosa's permission. Novenas stamped with the imprimatur of Bishop Oviar were distributed. 
In May 1949, prominent leaders of lay Catholic organizations, which included top government officials, issued a manifesto urging a national novena from May 22nd to 30 to the Blessed Mother, Mediatrix of All Grace. This was to culminate in a great communion all over the Philippines. Moreover, a church to be known as the Chapel of Our Lady Mediatrix of All Grace began to rise, funded entirely by public donations and finished within the brief span of two years. Estimates of the crowds at Lipa numbered into the thousands. On November 28, for instance, the Manila Times reported 30,000 people present at the convent. On January 23, 1949, during the laying of the cornerstone of what was to be the Church of Our Lady Mediatrix of All Grace, a ceremony officiated by Bishop of Yar with numerous priests in attendance, crowd estimates range from 20 to 70 to 500,000. So great was the national preoccupation with Lipa that in March 1949, the country's flag carrier, Philippine Airlines, began a series of special chartered flights from Manila to Lipa and back at the cost of 250 pesos. All I can remember at this point is that I was only one of a, a virtual mob, you know, buses, private cars, jeepneys, all making a beeline and making a pilgrimage 